when Sega released its 32X add-on for the Genesis in November of 1994, it was met with a ton of questions. Just about everyone in the gaming media was asking about how Sega planned to support two 32-bit consoles at the same time, which usually just led to mockery that one would surely get shortchanged. As many had guessed, it was the 32X that suffered mightily when it came to software support. But out of all that mismanagement and broken promises, Sega did manage to develop and release a dedicated Sonic spinoff for the 32X called Knuckles Chaotix. While the blue blur himself was not actually in the game, it took place after Sonic and Knuckles, and followed a group of characters all related to Sonic's various adventures. Though the expectations of fans were sky high, the trajectory of the 32X meant this came and went with a whimper, and it's never been ported to any mainstream console since. That leaves Knuckles Chaotix in an interesting position of being one of the most elusive titles to exist in the Sonic universe. Unless you have the original hardware or use emulation, there is no other way to play it. The mediocre sales of the original release has also meant that Chaotix is a fairly expensive game these days. Trying to get this title in its original box complete will run you hundreds of dollars now. But the real question is, was Chaotix actually any good? Did it ease the pain of owning a 32X all those years ago? In this episode, we will take a look at it, see how it looks, sounds, plays, and talk about its overall quality. Hope you guys enjoy my review of Knuckles Chaotix for the 32X. The story here follows Knuckles after the events of his adventure with Sonic. He now finds himself the guardian of Carnival Island, which is essentially a massive amusement park full of rides and games. It also happens to use the Power Emerald to run everything, which of course brings the evil Dr. Robotnik calling to steal it. To make matters worse, Metal Sonic is with him and they have imprisoned your friends. It's now your job to get them back while stopping the destruction of Carnival Island. Of course you'll find none of that in the actual game. If you don't spend time reading it in the instruction manual, none of that makes a lick of difference in the game itself. While this does look and play very similar to what you know, what we have here is quite a bit different from your previous Sonic outings. After the opening stage begins, you quickly become tethered to the first character you rescue. The game calls this Ring Power and it acts as a sort of rubber band that allows you to stretch and snap one another to move faster, jump higher, and add a unique twist to Sonic's typical gameplay. The individual characters also have abilities that you can take advantage of. Knuckles can still glide and climb, Vector can dash in the air, Mighty can wall jump, Charmy can hover and fly, and Espio can run along walls and ceilings. From there, you have the standard set of moves that are very recognizable. Most of your characters can spin dash and spin attack, so you can take out the bad guys in classic form. You'll need these powers too, because the stages in Chaotix are built with verticality and climbing in mind. So much so that you have additional abilities with your ring power, because it's easy to get yourself in a situation where it looks like you can't move forward. For the cost of 10 rings, you can call your partner to your side if you get separated. You can also pick up and throw your partner both on the ground and during a jump, a useful move should you need some extra height. There are also a few snap abilities you'll need to use. If you find your partner hanging below you, charge the ring power by pressing down and it will snap you upwards. You can also do this on flat ground by holding the B button. This locks one partner in place while the other one stretches the tether for a big rubber band boost. Gone are the days of having a partner with no consequences if they get hit. Should your partner take damage, you will lose a ring every time. Fortunately, there are power-ups to help you through your adventure. You'll get familiar options like speed shoes, shields, and invincibility. New to Chaotix is the Combine Ring, which melds all your rings into one giant silver ring. Take a hit and your rings stay together and can easily be picked back up. There is also a swap you can pick up to change around your two characters, and a change that will give you a new partner for a short while. The grow and shrink powers most directly affect how far you can jump and the places you can access. 
After scoring 20 rings, you have the option to go into a bonus stage. This is a free-falling type scenario where you can score extra points, rings, and bonus items. Should you have 50 rings at the end of a level, you can enter the special stage. This is a forward-scrolling 3D area where you must collect a certain number of blue spheres before the time runs out or you fall off the stage. Should you succeed, you'll gain access to the Chaos Ring, which act in the same way as Sonic's Chaos Emeralds. In order to get the best ending, you'll need all six Chaos Rings and the Power Emerald before the final battle with Dr. Robotnik. In between stages, you'll have access to a world select area, a character selection machine, and the option to leave or save your game. Finally, Chaotix is a two-player co-op adventure. The visuals of Chaotix are both familiar and decidedly new to the world of Sonic. The areas of Carnival Island could easily have appeared in any of the previous Sonics and are loaded with colorful layers of parallax scrolling and the trademark loops and springs to push you through the level. What makes this stand out so much are the sprite-based scaling effects that are on just about everything. You and your partner spinning in and out of the scene, growing and shrinking in size, and of course the bonus stage where you are falling downwards. The extra muscle of the 32X gives the Genesis the ability to pull off these effects with ease. Hell, some of them seem to be in the game just for shits and giggles, as they have no real bearing on the gameplay at all. The Polygon special stages look cool, if a bit simplistic, but it's a nice step up over what came before it. The real question that matters here is, are these visuals what you expected of a 32-bit era console? They're certainly colorful, but outside of the neat sprite effects, is this a real step above what we had seen in the Genesis Sonic titles? The answer is likely to vary amongst all of you quite a bit, but for me, I was left wanting more. I think this game looks fine, I'd even go so far as to say it looks good, but it just wasn't enough. How about some polygon details in the backgrounds? Maybe some connecting superscalar tunnels from stage to stage. Perhaps a load of enemy and bosses that used polygon details. As nice as the visual presentation is, it could have been so much more given the hardware it was on. When some nice effect does pop up, it's usually small and goes by quickly, not leaving much of an impression. With the Genesis handling most of the heavy lifting here in the backgrounds, the 32X was essentially left to handle just the sprites and polygons. And with that in mind, I really did expect more. I'll say again, it's a good looking game, but the power of those 32-bit processors sees very limited use. I have always felt that the Sonic games had great sound. The tunes that accompanied the three Genesis games were just as important as the graphics and gameplay of that series. And here it's no exception. The music in this one is very good. It's a group of tunes that are upbeat, fun, and a huge reason while you'll come back to play it again and again. From the opening cinematic to the closing credits, Chaotix is a nice sounding cart that showed the 32X had no issue pumping out memorable music with a little talent behind the wheel. Let's listen to a few samples to see what all the fuss is about.
To understand the journey of Chaotix, we need to go all the way back to where things began. Contrary to popular belief, this was not developed by Sonic Team, nor was it originally intended for the 32X. This one started life as a Sega Genesis project called Sonic Crackers. This was created in early 1994 as a prototype to pitch the elastic light connection as a gameplay element for the next Sonic. When it finally launched in April of 1995, it had gone from a Genesis game, to a Saturn game, to a 32X game in just one year's time, all while undergoing a complete story and character change. You really do need to know all that because Chaotix is a very disjointed experience thanks to its chaotic journey. The rubber band tether mechanic never feels like it's fully realized. You start out feeling awkward, if not a tad bit out of control, and that feeling lasts until the very last area. Even understanding the mechanics and having a fair grasp on how it plays, it just doesn't feel like something you could base an entire game around. Even once you get used to it, it's very easy to lose control of your team. The stage design is also very familiar the entire time. The whole thing feels like it's ripped straight from the games you'd been playing for nearly four years at that point. Even when just considering the levels you have in this game, outside of the differing backgrounds, the design never really changes between each zone. You feel like you are replaying the same layouts over and over. Enemies are sparse as well, making this feel more like an obstacle course than an action game. I also hated some of the special stage design. While it's easy to navigate at first, there are later sections that move choppy and leave you guessing where you can and can't go. I was also not a big fan of the randomized way of picking levels and partners. You can get items in the bonus stage to help that, but why? Jumping around the zones of Carnival Island like this makes the entire thing feel disjointed and destroys any real chance of a cohesive narrative. Despite all that, you can't really deny that this is still built upon a core gameplay experience that is still quite enjoyable. Running through this with Knuckles still feels like the Sonic of old a lot of the time, and the upbeat music and bright visuals definitely have a ton of appeal. That's going to put a lot of you in two very distinct camps. If you were a fan of this game's source material, you are more than likely going to jump into this and have a blast. You'll adjust to the tether and appreciate the sights and sounds of a slightly different Sonic adventure. Then there will be many of you that will roll your eyes at the shallow sprite scaling effects, recycled levels and gameplay, and walk away feeling that this is not something that showed off the 32X in any real meaningful way. Personally, I was caught in between the two groups. I found a lot of this fun and enjoyed my time with it, but when it was over, I was left feeling like it easily could have been a Genesis game. I wanted something flashier, more impressive, and something that really stood apart from the previous Sonic titles, especially for the premium Sega charge for this sucker. It was a good game I feel, but as a killer app, it fell well short of being a system seller. Knuckles Chaotix was developed internally by Sega CS, a group comprised of talent that helped create the likes of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Sonic CD, the GG Shinobi, Wrist Star, Fantasy Star 4, and Virtua Racing Deluxe. It came on a 24 megabit cartridge and certainly didn't lack for content. It's actually a fairly long game that has multiple endings and a save battery to keep your progress. If you are looking for something on your 32X to play, it's actually a fine choice given your other options. With that said, I would definitely recommend this more for the Sonic fan out there. Underneath of the new tethering system, there is still a fun and familiar experience here that will bring joy to those that had fun with the previous games. I want to be clear however, if you are coming into Chaotix fresh and looking for a showpiece for the power of the 32X, I'm afraid this will leave you a bit put out. The scaling sprites, pretty parallax, and the bonus stages certainly looked a part of a high-end product, but I just feel it doesn't use the hardware to its fullest potential to impress the majority of those looking for it. For those of you that are curious, Sonic Crackers also inspired the eventual development of Sonic 3D Blast. Along with that tether mechanic, it also used overhead isometric stages. 
I often wonder if Sega had held on to this as a Saturn project and released it at Christmas of 1995, could it have made a difference with some more bells and whistles added to the presentation and gameplay? It almost seems a shame that it was released on the ill-fated 32X because it never really had a chance to go anywhere. Reviews of that era didn't help much either. Popular magazines like Next Generation crushed it, calling it tired and unimpressive. GamePro didn't even think the music was good, crapping on it, the visuals, and the gameplay, all while calling it a complete miss. Likewise, game players teed off on it in a similar fashion. They felt nothing was impressive, and wondered why it was on the 32X at all. Even when a publication gave it a relatively decent score, the review had a decidedly negative tone, often mentioning its lack of innovation and it being a lesser game than the previous Sonic outings. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this game, and if you'd like to see more standalone reviews of 32X titles. It didn't have much, but I sure do have a lot to say about what's there. I'm SegaLordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.